Good morning. It's so good to see you all, and you're all looking great today, especially you. Whether you are from St. Michael's, Holy Trinity, Redgate, or maybe from further afield, you are all welcome. I'm Vicky, and I'm leading today with Duncan. So yes, good morning. So Mark will open and close our service today. Lord will give us a great message from the Bible. We'll sing some songs, pray, share our family news. And it's really great to see how people are getting along during this lockdown. And this week, the House of Killen will bring us a craft activity. I'm still decorating those stones. So over to Mark for our opening prayer. Good morning, my name's Mark Stamford. I'm Vicar of Holy Trinity Church in Formby and St Michael and All Angels Church in Orkar. Wherever you're from, you are really welcome. Please join with me in these opening words of praise. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. As we worship you on your heavenly throne, prepare our hearts for the coming of your spirit. Amen. And so we join together to sing our first song, Rescuer. singing like angels today and I'm sure I saw some of you dancing. Well done. We are now going to take a moment to say sorry to God for the things that we have done wrong this week 
or the things that we haven't done that we really should have. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption. Yet we have forgotten your pain and stayed in the realm of evil you defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life, yet we have preferred the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, your God and our God. Plead there at the right hand of God our forgiveness and entry into the fulfilness of his presence. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It has been great to see all your photos and videos showing us what you have been up to during lockdown. We have plenty of space to share them and it is really good to see each other. We also want to celebrate birthdays and significant events, so keep sending in your photos and videos and telling us what's happening in your lives. Here are some of the things that you have been up to. Many of us have been commenting on how great nature has been during this lockdown. A deer has been seen running on Crosby Beach. We have all been amazed at the sunsets at the beach, free of the polluting haze. The sunsets are beautiful. The colours in the parks around us where I live are just fantastic. So we would like you to send in photos of what you find inspiring in nature. Maybe you have seen the Higgins rabbit running wild around the swimming pool. So now over to Brian for our Bible reading. This morning's reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth, by finishing the work you came, gave me to do. And now, Father, 
glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pants. It was the feeling I had when I realised the Bible passage was a bit more complicated. There's no animals, there's no miracles, there's no pithy sayings. And so today I've worked really hard and done a lot of procrastinating. At 10 o'clock at night, this is take 14 and I hope this is okay. The passage that we've just heard takes place just before Jesus walks into the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows he will be arrested and begin his journey to the cross. The passage, as I said, is dense in language, full of concepts, but very beautiful. And we see both the divinity and the humanity of Christ. I don't know if you've ever experienced having to leave somebody. I remember taking the little blonde haired Barney to nursery for the first time and having those feelings of, oh, he's so small. And perhaps you've had that feeling when you've dropped off quite a big child at university. Or maybe even when you've taken the dog to the vet for an operation, you've got to leave them overnight. Or maybe as you visited a friend who you know is in their final days and you're saying goodbye. These moments are real, aren't they? And whenever I've experienced them, my head has been full of emotions, full of thoughts, and often I've prayed. And Jesus, faced with a situation that's quite similar, knowing he was going to leave his disciples, prayed. He prays amazingly for himself. The Son of God prays to the Father God that he will glorify him, that he will continue his work. He prays that he will be glorified and will be taken back to heaven. And you see this back and forth between past and present, before creation, in the future. It's quite remarkable. At points it feels like you're eavesdropping on a really private conversation. And it's not a mistake. Jesus wants us to know the divine nature and relationship of God because in that relationship of love we find real intimacy and it's really important we understand that. And then Jesus prays with love and intimacy and tenderness for his disciples. He knows they're going to find the situation tough. He knows they're a bit rash, a bit stupid at times, that they're not quite ready, that they're going to struggle with the emotions they won't understand or have a clue what's going on. And he prays for them. He prays that they will be protected. He prays that they will carry on knowing the Father through him. He prays that they will continue the work of sharing of the knowing of the Father through him. And he prays that they will have total joy in oneness with God. So what is this oneness? This picture by Rublev, painted in the 15th century, depicts the Trinity. The Father in gold looks to the Son in blue, who turns to point to the Holy Spirit in green. Each distinct, each one, together. There's an intimacy, a collectiveness, a divinity. And it's been used over the world for meditation and prayer. And yet, if you look closely, the Holy Spirit is pointing outwards of the picture, pointing towards us. 
Art historians believe that originally there was a small mirror placed at this point on the picture. And so as you looked on to the Trinity at the oneness of God, you saw yourself amongst it. Richard Raw, the Franciscan monk, talks of this oneness as the divine dance. And Jesus' prayer is an invitation for us to join this divine dance. The cross was the ultimate invitation of love, our restoration with God. And the invitation seen in the picture through the mirror is still there. We are asked each day whether we want to do the day in oneness with God. You don't have to be clever or ready or holy. You don't have to be organised. You don't have to be um, brilliant. You don't even have to be um, energised. We can follow God as our lazy, sullen, lockdown selves. But the invitation is there. Jesus has opened the doors of heaven for oneness with the Father, intimacy with the Creator God. And he's asking today, will you say yes? Say yes to doing a day in oneness of God and see where it takes you. Thanks, Laura. We always love to hear you speaking. Now, back to the house of Killen for some craft. So take it away. We are going to make a rocking Noah's Ark like this. You will need paper plates, colour card, colouring pens, scissors, glue, pencil, and something circular if you want to. Take the paper plate and fold it like this, and then colour it in so it looks like this. To make the house, fold your coloured card in half like this. Then cut one piece out like this. Then draw on the outline of the house like this. And then cut it out like this. Remember to keep the fold at the top. Draw the animals on coloured card like this. I chose a polar bear, a tiger, polar bear, tiger, and giraffes. Although, if you don't like these animals, you can choose whatever you want. Use something circular to help you. After you've finished drawing, cut out the animals like this. Then glue on the animals. Thanks for that. We are going to sing again. So make some noise before the quiet time ahead.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, our Father, we bring our prayers to you today. We thank you, Jesus, that although because of your ascension into heaven, we can no longer see you, you are still with us through your Holy Spirit, guiding us, helping us, and above all, loving us. Help us see you in those around us, especially in the poor and needy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for all who are working on the front line to protect us and keep us safe. Now that the statistics show us that the illness is levelling out, we pray that a new upsurge will be prevented and that people will continue to behave wisely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, dear loving Lord, for all who are sick or suffering from not just the virus, but all the other problems that life throws at us. Pour out your healing upon them, Lord, and show us how we can help, even if we are not able to come near them physically. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to God those who have been recently bereaved and because of the lockdown, they're even more distressed and disorientated. We pray for the families of Elaine Kite, Blanche Graham, Valerie Gorman, who was Paul's sister, and Pam Woodward, who was Richard's sister-in-law. Lord, give them all the comfort and peace that only you can give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities to be together through all the technology and the skills and cleverness of those who know how to handle it. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us senses of humour and the willingness to lift up our hearts with fun and laughter. Help us to bring this sense of fun to all around us, especially those who are alone and lonely. We pray especially that we can help those who are struggling mentally so that they can find a sense of purpose and stability through the knowledge of your love for your people, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the good things around us, for the spring weather, the flowers and the birds, for the lovely people we speak to across the road, for our surroundings and homes. We pray, Lord, for all who are less fortunate than us. Help us to help them. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude our time of prayer with the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. So let us all say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Sadly, we're coming to the end of our service but it has been great to see so many of you. There will be a Zoom call get together after this service, so please grab your coffee or your tea and join in with us. The details are on the YouTube chat. Before we have our closing prayer and song, I must stress, please keep sending in your photos and videos and news to our email address that should be appearing on the screen 
And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All support is very welcome. It's your contributions that make this service a celebration. Also, if you usually give to church through the plate or envelope scheme and are thinking, how do I give to church now? Well, we have set up a couple of Just Giving pages. The details are on the screen. So please, please do continue to support our churches while the doors are closed. Thank you. Now over to Mark. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed this service. Please join with me in these words of closing prayer. To you, Lord Jesus, who will come back in the same way he went up into heaven, be glory and honour now and forever. Amen. And so may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you all and all those whom you care for now and forevermore. Amen. Please join with us for our closing song, How Great Is Our God. Oh, we'll see how